Hi, it's Ellen, and today we're going to be talking about elasticity of demand. So elasticity, first of all, measures the responsiveness of one variable to the change in another. And we have various types of elasticity of demand, and the first of this is PED, price elasticity of demand. The formula for this is PED is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. An elastic demand is when PED is greater than one, inelastic demand is when it's less than one, and unitary elasticity is when PED is equal to one. So in reality, PED is almost always negative as an increase in price would result in a decrease in demand. However, sometimes in your exams, you may face questions when PED is positive, and this isn't something to worry about, it's just sometimes for the sake of ease. Alongside PED, we have YED, which is income elasticity of demand. And this is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. And the, the YED changes for different types of goods, which we covered in our demand topic. For example, normal goods have a positive income elasticity. Um, so YED is more than zero. This means that when income rises, demand also increases. Inferior goods, on the other hand, have a negative income elasticity. YED, therefore, is less than zero. So as income rises, demand would decrease. So we can see that YED can be both positive or negative, depending on the type of good. And finally, we have cross price elasticity of demand, which is equal to XED. This is when a change in the price of one good can change the quantity demanded for another. So the formula for XED is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded of good A divided by the percentage change in the price of good B. Now XED is positive if the goods are substitute and negative if the goods are complements. So if, but also if the XED is close to zero, it means that the goods are just unrelated. So to recap the three types of elasticity of demand, we have price, cross price and income. And if we go to price elasticity of demand and the numbers, we know that if PED would be more than one, it would be elastic um, kind of demand. And if it was less than one, it would be inelastic. So we covered with this cross price elasticity of demand, the possibility of having positive and negative numbers and what they mean for being complements or substitutes. And you remember we spoke about this in the demand episode. For complements, a fall in the price of one good would lead to an increase in the quantity demanded for the other. And as such, the number for XED is negative. So complement goods, think for example, peanut butter and bread, or ice cream and sun cream. So XED is less than zero. And then the reverse is true for substitute goods. A fall in the price of one would lead to a fall in the quantity demanded of the other. Think, for example, coffee and tea. So in this case, XED is greater than zero. And finally, you also have independent goods. And this is when they're just completely unrelated. Think, for example, does the price of donkeys affect the quantity of ice cream demanded? You'd hope the answer would be no. And if not, please say why they are related. So just to recap that, the cross price elasticity of demand for substitutes is positive because a fall in the price of one good would lead to a decrease in the quantity demanded for the other. So let's think about the theoretical scenario when demand can be perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. And it's actually clear that this is relevant because it affects government intervention through things such as indirect taxes or subsidies. So firstly, let's cover perfectly elastic demand. This is when PED is equal to infinity, um, either being positive or negative. Any price increase would cause demand to drop to zero. And then we also have perfectly inelastic demand, which is when PED is equal to zero, and thus any price change would not affect demand. And the best way to conceptualize this um, on a graph is that in a, Elastic demand on the graph, the demand curve would be completely horizontal, whereas with inelastic demand, 
the demand curve would be completely vertical. And if you just remember the I in inelastic, so I is vertical. So that's quite a good little tip. So if demand is perfectly elastic, what happens when the price rises? The demand falls to zero. And then the reverse is true for inelastic demand. So having covered elasticity of demand, we should now broach what kind of factors would affect elasticity. So firstly, let's talk about um, the issues of income and time. It's quite logical that the higher the proportion of income spent, the more elastic the good or service is. For example, people are more sensitive to the price of a TV than they are a Mars bar. And this makes quite a lot of sense because the greater the proportion of income spent, the greater the opportunity cost decision is. And that's why it's more elastic. Um, goods tend to also be more price elastic in the long run. And this is because you can spend more time looking for appropriate alternatives and you're more sensitive to price changes. Whereas if you're under time constraints, you don't have as much choice and therefore the product is more inelastic. The nature of the good also influences how elastic the demand is. Addictive goods, for example, tend to be more price inelastic because a change in price is unlikely to hugely affect the quantity demanded. Think, for example, cigarettes are considered a necessity for smokers. So if the price goes up a bit, that price increase will probably be much more significant than the drop in the quantity demanded. And the reverse is true for products which are not deemed absolutely essential. They're more elastic. The impact of an indirect tax depends on the PED as well. So effectively, a tax shifts the supply curve to the left, and this will result in a fall in demand. However, if the good has inelastic demand, the reduction in the consumption will be fairly small. Um, as a result, consumer burden is significantly higher than the producer burden. So this is a really important thing for the government to consider when they're placing an indirect tax. Similarly, the same is true for subsidies. A subsidy effectively shifts the supply curve to the right, which means that the demand in theory should also increase. If the good or service has an inelastic demand, the price will drop more than the quantity will increase. And if it's elastic, the price will drop less than the quantity increases. So, and also an important thing for the government to consider when implementing subsidies. Finally, the more substitutes which are available, the more price elastic a good is. This is because it is easy to find an alternative product as a replacement if the price of one good rises. So just to sum up the factors which affect elasticity of demand, we've got the availability of substitutes, the type of good, time and percentage of income. And in terms of the nature of goods, we've got addictive goods, which are more inelastic, and we've got kind of less essential goods, which are more elastic. And if we just go back to the numbers of income elasticity of demand, normal goods have positive income elasticity, whereas inferior goods have negative YED. And then if we go back to the numbers in terms of price elasticity of demand, perfectly inelastic demand has a PED of zero versus perfectly elastic demand has a PED of infinity. Thank you very much for listening to this episode about the elasticity of demand. Next time, we're going to talk about elasticity of revenue.